Let's spend some time to talk about what you will learn from this course. Um, as I said earlier, um, this course is really part of a much larger course that's offered by the International Institute for Software Testing. And it is, uh, that's the course that leads to the certified software test professional. And I honestly put in this course that you are taking uh, as much as I could within the time frame allowed. Okay, so the course, as you can see from the outline, consists of six different sections. Every section has a number of lectures. All lectures are videos like the one you are watching now. You don't see my, uh, my image there on the, on the screen. You don't see my face, but you, you just see the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, we have already covered introduction, the introduction section. Now, the next section we're about to start after this uh, uh, lecture is um, in which we're going to be talking about different software development life cycles. It is my opinion that if you are going to start a successful career in software testing, you really need to understand um, the different uh, development life cycles. And we are going to start with the waterfall model, uh, which has existed for over 40 or 45 years now, and the companies are still using it. You get an overflow of, uh, overview of that. Then I will move to talk about the V model, and that's again, um, it's been around over 30 years at least, uh, and it, it has some improvement over the waterfall model. You will understand the difference, you will understand how the V model solved some problems of the waterfall model. Then I will speak about the rapid application development model, which came about uh, in 19 in the early 80 in the, sorry early 90s <clears throat> to solve problems with the previous two models, the waterfall model and also the V model. And we're going to spend some time on that. We're going to understand everything about the rapid application development. Then I'm going to close that section uh, with a lecture on the Agile framework. The Agile framework uh, and the Scrum methodology are very popular now. About um, 70 to 80 percent of projects use Agile methodologies. So if you are planning to start a career or you want to be become a successful test professional, you really need to understand Agile and that most importantly in this discussion, I want you to understand how you can live a, an Agile life within an Agile project. So we'll talk about Agile, the characteristics of Agile, how different it is from uh, the first three models, and I will touch on the Scrum methodology, which is the most popular methodology in the framework. Once we get a good understanding of the um, of the uh, uh, the the four different models for software development and testing, I'm going to um, spend some time on um, software testing concepts. In this one, we're going to talk about how you how you can set up your objectives or your goal or your purpose of software testing because uh, unfortunately most most test professionals think that uh, you know we do testing in order to discover problems you're going to find out from uh, the very first lecture in this section that testing is much more than just uh, finding a problems so you'll see at least two slides that tells you some of the very important objectives you must have for your testing effort, okay? Then uh, in the next few lectures of the same section, we're going to be talking about uh, requirements. We're going to talk about functional requirements, how different they are from quality requirements. We're going to touch on uh, what it means for requirements to be testable because that is the most important thing. If we are going to design tests tests based on requirements, so those requirements must be 
testable, so we will understand that. I will move on to speak about user stories because user stories are used heavily in Agile projects and they're just a different form of requirements. Uh, then we will close section three with a discussion on use cases, which sometimes get confused with user stories. So you will know the difference between user stories and use cases. And you will see that use cases are much more um, complete. They provide much more information about the requirements than user stories. Once we understand those concepts, then you are ready to enjoy my methodology to design tests. And the methodology is what I call scenario-based. This is this methodology I've tried, I've used, I've taught to thousands of companies, multi-thousands of software test professionals around the globe. Um, they all tell me that it works. I want to teach you this methodology. Um, what you get in this course is good enough to help to allow you to start using the methodology, okay? Um, we will learn the concept of scenarios. Uh, we can learn how to do risk-based testing uh, based on scenarios, which is a very unique way of doing risk-based testing. That's very different from what anyone else is doing risk-based testing. We will learn how to take a requirement and then break it down into scenarios. And you will have a number of hands-on exercises. These are not just lectures. I know we call them lectures, but, the, but inside them, there is a lot of hands-on. So I will give you a problem to work on. I will give you time to work on. Then we'll come back and see what would be a reasonable solution to the problem. Uh, we will learn about test cases and the components of test cases. We will learn how to take scenarios and break them, break them down into test cases. We will learn how to group uh, test cases into test sets in preparation of executing those test cases. We will learn how to write test scripts. This is quite a bit of discussion of, of the methodology. Um, you will not, I'm going to tell you this, you will not see this in any book out there. If you if you go and scan the over 500 books in software testing out there in the market, no book talks about that. This is my own methodology, and it will remain unpublished until I complete the course, the, the book that I'm writing now. Uh, once you understand everything about the methodology, then we're going to talk about software testing certifications because there has been a lot of confusion about those and people are going crazy about certifications and everyone think that if I get certified, I will get a good job. Wrong, wrong, wrong. It's not the certification that will give you the job. It's how it's what you are capable of doing. Uh, it is how much you understand. When when hiring managers interview you, they don't ask you what kind of certifications they have. In fact, I'm going to tell you some of the certifications out there that are very popular have given very bad name to certifications. Why? Because hiring managers understand now that that if you go and get a certification based on passing an exam, that means nothing at all. Because uh, if you pass a multiple choice exam, it doesn't mean anything. And I've heard the manager saying, I don't care if you're certified or not. What I care about is how you can solve a problem during an interview. That's why in the very last section of this course, I'm going to help you prepare for your interview. I'll tell you what to do before you go to the interview and what to do during the interview to, to guarantee that you are you come up you come out as the best candidate for the shop. Okay. Um, so if you want to know about what kind of testing we're going to be learning a lot. I mean we're going to be learning a lot in this course. Um, these are the same uh, learning objectives that are uh, out in the course. Uh, understanding uh, the difference between quality assurance and, and testing, and that's very critical for me. I want you to know the difference. Uh, you're going to learn about how to become a real quality assurance professional, not just a tester, because as you're going to see, if you are going to be a tester 
then that's not very valuable for your employer. Um, your employer can hire a tester for much less money than what they can hire, what they can hire you for what, or what they can pay you. I want you to become a true QA person so that your employer value you. And when it comes the time to let people go or lay off people, you would not be the one to be laid off. I mean, we've been suffering, or the, the software testing profession has been suffering because uh, corporates, especially in the United States here, have been finding out that, you know, they're paying so much to software testers, but they're not getting, uh, uh, you know, their money worth it. Uh, and you started to hire testers from anywhere else for much less money. I want you to be very valuable for your project and your employer. Um, of course, as I said earlier, you're going to be learning the different development life cycles from uh, the waterfall model to V model to RED uh, and Agile framework. Um, and then you will understand the Scrum methodology in very brief and concise way. You don't need to, write, to read a book about Scrum. Uh, you don't need to take a very large course about Scrum because as a tester professional, you only need to understand a few things about Scrum and those are covered in this course. Scrum is the most popular methodology um, uh, when projects use Agile. Um, now we're going to talk about how to do testing in an Agile project, although uh, this course is not explicitly about designing tests for Agile projects, although the methodology that I'm going to be covering in this course uh, applies to Agile and non-Agile projects. But I will be putting together another course that focuses on Agile projects, OK? Um, um, the uh, the the we're gonna we're gonna find out how to put together your testing objectives. How do you? Because again, one more time, you, you don't just go and think that you know you're gonna be testing in order to find problems, or you're gonna testing to find make sure the system works as expected. There's so much more into that. I will teach you how to uh, write your expectations or your your objectives in software testing, and you will feel very proud to share uh, your goals with the rest of the test team to teach them that that really testing is not about just finding defects or making sure the system works or doesn't work all right you'll get a good understanding of the functional requirements and the quality requirements as i said in the course outline uh, you'll learn about uh, testable requirements and you're going to learn five characteristics that that, me that make a requirement testable uh, you will get a nice and concise definition and uh, and overview of user stories for agile projects as well as use cases. Uh, you will also learn how to take a requirement, analyze it, and this is really this bullet here is the very first step of the test design methodology that's going to be uh, in section three, I believe. Let me go back here. Uh, it's right here, section four. Okay, so the very the section four here starts with um, this bullet here. Learn how to ask relevant questions. So when you start testing, when you start designing your tests, you're going to deal uh, with requirements or with user stories. And we have a problem out there that test professionals do not know how to ask the right and the relevant questions. So this lecture here is going to is going to teach you how to ask good questions so that people really eventually will like you and will like to hear your questions because your questions are going to be right to the point. Okay, uh, once you do that, uh, then you go to the next step of the test design process, which is how to break down requirements or user stories to scenarios. We're going to even learn about uh, negative and positive scenarios, something that people don't do out there. Um, and negative scenarios are going to help you do a much better job in negative testing, uh, which again, one thing that most statistic professionals are not very good at. Uh, remember, I, I've designed this course based on 40 years of experience working with test professionals around the world. And I know what, what they are very bad at and what, what they are very good at. And testers who work for me, I know 
what their deficiencies are and this course along with, and as well as a bigger course from IIST um, were designed to help you avoid the problems that other test professionals have now uh, once you build your scenarios whether they are negative scenarios or positive scenarios uh, then then you you need to validate those scenarios I will give you uh, guidance of how to go about validating your scenarios with the rest of the project team whether they are business analysts or developers or product or whatever you must validate your scenarios as you can see here these are the steps of the methodology now once you validate your scenarios and you have a, a list of scenarios that have been validated then before you go and create test cases um, for those scenarios, you need to narrow down uh, the set of scenarios you're going to test it because as you will hear from the course that um, if you follow my methodology, you will be able to come up with much more scenarios than what you can ever test. That's why I needed to give you a risk-based a risk -based approach to select the most critical scenarios and those are the ones you're going to be uh, taking to the next step to write um, test cases uh, now of course risk-based testing is very important out there however if you go and read even books on, on risk-based testing you'll find the approaches that are out there is are not very good because guess what they teach you how to do risk-based testing after you already write your test cases which you, you would have spent so much time to write your test cases and then you start selecting which test case is more important than another what's unique about this, this risk-based approach is that you will you will do the risk-based approach or the risk-based analysis on the scenarios before you move on to write test cases uh, so you can limit the number of scenarios and only those critical scenarios you choose are the ones you're going to use to create some test cases all right uh, we will learn that you cannot just take a test case as is and start executing it we will learn a nice simple approach to group test cases together into uh, groups of test cases we call them test sets because when it comes the time to write scripts we we need to write a script for a group of test cases this is the worst thing that happens out there in in, in corporations that that test professionals uh, they have a bunch of test cases and they go and write a script for every test they want to execute uh, um, my methodology goes improves this completely it avoids this problem because you can imagine how many companies I've been out there um, and I've seen the disaster they have all right that they have thousands and thousands of test scripts that they cannot even maintain or they don't even have time to execute and that's because people have written test scripts for every test case I am giving I'm going to give you a, a nice way by which you can group your test cases into test sets and then you can only write the test scripts for those test sets then once we finish the methodology we're going to move to um, the section on looking at different certifications and I'll help you to decide if you want to be certified or not and if actually you make the decision uh, to be certified then how do you choose a certification that's going to help you get the job not not to help you get a piece of paper um, to show to someone and that someone will know for sure that you did not understand anything all right there are so many certifications out there like that okay and the last section as I said we're going to be learning and getting some guidance about how to lead a good effective interview uh, um, and how to how to prepare for that interview so that you can get the job I hope you will uh, decide to take this course I promise you you will learn so much this is not a typical course you get from anywhere else this is a course that has lots of details this is, has a lot of how to okay so I hope you decide to take that course uh, with me